This interview is for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress American Folk Life Center, and it is with Alice Lillian Watson Lane. Uh, Mrs. Lane was a wave serving from June 1, 1944 to March 8, 1946. Uh, today is Friday, March 7, 2008. My name is Harriet Williamson. Henry Radcliffe is the director of sound and lighting and is also the videographer. Also in the studio is Mrs. Lane's husband, Lloyd Chester Lane, who is a veteran of the U United States Navy. Um, we are in the television studio of WILL in Urbana, Illinois on the University of Illinois campus. Mrs. Lane, to start, would you like to talk about when and where you were born and perhaps fill us in a little bit on your parents and your background and where you grew up and perhaps talk about uh, the various schools that you attended? Well, I was, my father was a coal miner from Illinois and every spring or winter they went on strike. So that's why I was born in River Rouge, suburb of Detroit, Michigan. And uh, that's why uh, I came right back to Illinois. I was just a baby when they came back. And then my father left my mother when I was 18 months old. So. I, uh, they got a divorce and between living at my grandparents and, and relatives, in fact, uh, I was almost adopted. This uh, couple, a doctor and his wife took me for a while. And when they found out my mother was going to give me up, they brought me home right away. Anyway, uh, we, uh, my mother, my dad's sisters and brothers, they were from Scotland. They came, they had migrated to Detroit area. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was born there. They were visiting my grandparents. Anyway, uh, they, uh, my mother went to Detroit and she was a maid. And, uh, around Champaign-Urbana, and she went to Detroit to work for real rich people in Gross Point. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she got married to a gentleman, a Bulgarian, and his name was Milan Siskov. And uh, I was five years old. I think it was four when they got the divorce, my mother did. But I was five when we went to Detroit to live. That was 1928, mm -hmm. the year before the Depression hit. And things went along pretty good. Uh, my, own, my stepfather had played in Henry Ford's band and he was very musical, so I learned a lot about operas. Anyway, uh, the Depression hit and it, things went downhill. My mother couldn't she was working at Hudson's, painting a stripe around the cars. And it just got so bad, we had to come back to Illinois. And my father had bought, with my grandparents, 12 acres next to my grandparents there in Urbana. So we moved in with my grandparents for a while. I was nine years old when we did that. And Grandma was still using a horse and buggy to deliver vegetables and things. Anyway, uh, we b bought these two rooms and we lived there on two rooms. Mother, of course, worked in town. My stepfather really didn't, he was from like royalty or something in Bulgaria. He, co he couldn't see going out and getting a job. But and we couldn't have WPA because he couldn't work for those because we had 12 acres. So uh, anyway, I went to Marriott School 
and then I when I was eighth grade, and then I went to Urbana High for four years, and then I my first job was at the union union building in the dishwashing room. Things weren't still weren't very good in the country, and uh, I. Elmer Roosevelt came and dedicated the Union Building when I was there in December, and I got to see her. They let us all go upstairs and see her. I never forget her black clothes. Anyway, uh, what, why were her clothes black? Do you think? What? Her clothes were black. No, her stockings were black. Oh, her stockings <laughs> were black. Okay. Anyway, uh, later my mother was working for this professor. How? Robert Howe, Louis Howe's right hand, uh, Franklin Roosevelt's right hand man in, in the White House. And it was his daughter, married to a professor, and uh, mother worked for her later. But anyway, Elmer Roosevelt came and stayed with her, visited, had dinner, and set the ta helped set the table and everything. Anyway, uh, about a year after I was out of high school, I got married to Army fellow stationed in Chinook. And uh, I lived in Syracuse for a while. And uh, I uh, worked at General, Mo General Electric. And I worked on the first 10 Kier units radar that was to be used on ships. And they placed me at number one on the assembly line, which was just to put a little rim around. But I could, I helped build them and I could repair them and everything. That's what gave me the idea that I wanted to work in when I joined the service. And then I came home and I got a divorce. My husband was running around. And then I went back and worked in Syracuse at a Kraus Heinz painting uh, things that he used for uh, identifying whether their ship's f friend or foe. I used khaki, you know. And uh, I worked there six months and I went home. I got tired of that and went home and I thought, I saw the ads for the trying to get women to join the waves. So I thought that's a good idea. And my mother thought it was a good idea too. So I went and joined and I had to wait till, that was in March, but I had to wait till May the, June the 1st to actually uh, be called up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to, uh, took the, New York Central to uh, Hunter College, which is now Lehman College, and uh, went to had my boot camp there for six weeks. And uh, we got one weekend off, but the Paramount Theater Studios was uh, filming the movie Here Come the Waves. So I got to march two weeks, which was really hot and girls fainted. But anyway, we got, all we got from Paramount was an extra weekend in New York City. <laughs> so then I did pass the test to go to school. So they just sent me to Mercer Field, facility field in uh, Trenton, New Jersey which was better. I had asked for uh, San Diego and I got to uh, New Jersey. My girlfriend asked for New San, it's, uh, San and she got San Diego anyway. But uh, I was lucky I got radio radar, which I had asked for. And uh, I put the, the first day I had to make coffee because the, the chief was really mad because we came in, we were the first waves. So he made us make coffee. He thought that's what we were gonna do. Anyway, he got shipped out in about a week. 
and we put uh, radio radar in the TBM. It used to be TBF by Grumman, but uh, TBM was General Motors. And uh, the Avenger and the Wildcat, which is FM2. And then I checked the IFF gear on the Corsair. And one time, smoke was coming out of the plane, and I thought, oh my gosh. And it was about a million dollar plane, but it wasn't uh, anything. But I had to call in and the radio and tell them that, uh, that it was okay. And while I was, uh, one day, a big torpedo bomber came in that was, they called it a pregnant. It had all this, they had round the clock duty, you know, please. It had all this uh, underneath the radar and all kinds of, I don't know what it was. Anyway, it was quite a th excitement, you know, seeing they had to protect it. And while I was there too, once in a while, the Marines uh, were at the gate and once in a while we had to go to the, uh, and escort people back to the airplanes, to the hangars. And one day this fellow said, aren't you from Urbana? And he had been my teacher, science, and later he was head of the ship someplace. Anyway, that was interesting, but it, uh, and I played basketball for the waves, and we had our uh, instructor, our coach was a Harvard professor, the same one that taught me how to get my rate. Anyway, we didn't live, win many games, but uh, we had fun. Can I back up for a minute? I yeah. want to ask you a couple of questions. When you were at Hunter and in boot camp, what was the training that you received there? Well, just how to act in the Navy, and there was, I don't even remember, it's been so long ago. Mm -hmm. We had to take swimming, and we got all kinds of shots, I remember. But uh, we had classes every day. Were the classes about technical things, or were they No, more not than... really. Okay. I don't, I don't really mm -hmm. remember what they were. Now, once you got to Mercer Field and you were involved in installing this radar, what what was the purpose of the radar in the airplanes? What how do, how did the radar function? What did it? What was the purpose of it for the pilot? Well, I guess to see where the planes were. And another thing, I fussed at them to let me go up in the TBM, and every time they uh, aviation uh, radio and radio man would go up with the mechanic, but this time they had to go back up, so they didn't have to have the radio man. So they let me go up right after I ate lunch, and we flew out over the ocean, and I got sick, really sick. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> But it must have been an exciting experience, though, to be in the in the plane. Oh, it was. I just and this one supply officer, she went up practically every day, and she got sick every time mm -hmm. she went up. I was telling about no parachutes. Oh well, I didn't have a parachute. They didn't give us parachutes. Mm -hmm. Now, um, was it hard to fit the radar into the plane, or? Was was it tight quarters in there for? Well, the for TBM working? is pretty good size, mm -hmm. but I had to climb up on the planes, the wings, to get in the the back. You know where they put the radio radar. So the radar was in the radio radar was in the back of the plane. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there was a kind of a walkway that you could go up t to the pilot. Now were there any... And the gunners, you know, were up above. But there was a plank or, you know, 
that she could walk up. There wasn't steps or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just her. How many planes would you work on each day? I don't remember. Would it be, you know, a couple or would it be many? Probably at least. Uh -huh. And when we weren't working on the planes, when it was raining out, they made us paint. Paint? Navy paint inside the hangars. What, so what were you, were you painting the planes as well? No, just the hangars. The hangars. And we, they also let us go to uh, class. Uh, this Harvard professor, she uh, taught us how to, all about uh, electrodes and, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. electricity. And so you were learning more about... Um, and I did, I finally got my rate when the, you had, there was a compliment in the, on the station, and so many of uh, ARTs, you know, and, and after the war was over, they started shipping him out, so that's why I got the raid. Mm -hmm. But so, I, had, I had to march a platoon in strip of 44. So what was your ultimate um, rank then? when you were in the waves, and were you well, assigned I've, to a particular um, squadron or division? Just Mercer Field. Okay. Um, it was aviation radio technicians made, mm -hmm. and then they changed it just before I got out of the surf, just before 46, I guess it was. They changed it to aviation electronic technicians made, third class. Now, you said at the beginning when you got to Mercer Field, you were sent off to make coffee. Do you feel that uh, while you were in the waves that people that you were working with appreciated and recognized the value of having women in the military? No, they didn't appreciate because that meant they had to go overseas. Mm. So they, there was a lot of uh, hostility there. I mean, some of them. Not all of them, but and that was just a few of the sailors. But they knew that uh, they would have to leave, you know, because uh, we were in the service. So did you feel that you received poor treatment by those people? No, not really. Just mm -hmm. things that were said, you know. Mm -hmm. And then after the war, I think it was in September, I went, they sent us, several of us, to Jacksonville for a week, trying to figure out where to send us from there. So we were in a transitional place, which was a big, uh, where most of the Navy was trained in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. The men were, and then I was sent to uh, Opelaka, which is my was called the Miami Air Station, which is 11 miles out of uh, Miami. And the first night we stayed in Al Capone's casino. I'll never forget. And the mosquitoes came in. They they had those old-fashioned wooden windows, and the mosquitoes came in, and they were terrible. I thought, boy, is Florida going to be like this? But I never saw another, or I never saw any roaches. Jacksonville had was terrible. Our barracks were full of roaches. Now, what what were you doing when you were in Florida? What was your first job? Oh, I, there? I was stay, uh, I was in administration. I typed. We had to type nine copies. Nine copies to for to send the sailors back to the ships they would come into the hospital and we would have to re type papers to send them back to the ships now were, while you were typing that was that something did you learn kind of the story about that person and what had happened to him no no, no I never no it was just pretty much and I was there six months uh -huh. so be you won't because I had that rating I got out earlier. If I'd have been a yeoman, I'd have stayed six more months. Mm -hmm. Now, was that 
towards the end of the war and you were looking forward this to... was after the war okay so after see the war. Mm -hmm. I was sent to Florida because the war was over well maybe I should go back and ask you about the chronology so when you left boot camp you went to Mercer Field and how many months were you there and was that in in then in 45 that you were at Mercer Field 44 to uh, September of 45, mm -hmm. June of 1st, July, July, uh, the middle of July till, so it was just a little over a year, I guess. Now, so. do you, can you um, talk at all about the, maybe any of the feelings that, that surrounded you while you were at Mercer Field? Was there a sense of urgency or anything like that because of the war and the fact that you were working on these planes? Yes. Uh, um, well, it was war, you know, but we never got papers, so we ne didn't even know how much, you know, how it was going, really. I didn't even know D-Day was because I was traveling. I went to, you know, Hunter College when D-Day, so I didn't know much about that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Now, I know when you were at Mercer Field, you uh, wanted to mention one of the very well-known people that you worked with there. That was uh, Harry Guggenheim. He was our, Harry Guggenheim was our commanding officer. He loved to play tennis, and the men didn't. He was always wanting to play with the men, tennis player. They didn't like. Anyway, uh, he was a bastard to Cuba, I guess. Before he and he was a World War One hero, I guess, mm -hmm. pilot. And he was a pretty nice guy. Um, when I was there at Mercer Field, we used to go into New York City in Philadelphia because we were 90 miles from New York City and 60 miles from Philadelphia. And we were right near Washington's Crossing and we had, they took us on a picnic there where Washington crossed the Delaware. And we used to go hunting or sunbathing at uh, Asbury Park. We used to hitchhike to Asbury Park because in those days it it was a lot longer to t if you took the bus, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, and we even hitchhiked to New York City one time, several of us. How do you feel about the time that you spent at Mercer Field? Was it uh, a good experience for you? I think it was a very good. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed. Uh, the work I did. One time I had to uh, weld. They were putting something together so, and they asked me to go and I helped them. But it, it, it really, uh, it really I thought was really enjoyable. Was there any danger involved in the work that you were doing? Not really, mm -hmm. no. How long would the, those planes be at Mercer Field before they took off and were? Um, oh, just a few days. Just a few days. So there they, was a. The, it, they test flew them right away mm -hmm. and uh, then t put them in the hangars. And, and well, we had a lot of waves there working in the supply and different departments. Were those planes then flown to other naval bases or to they aircraft carriers? They were flown carriers? to California and out uh -huh. to aircraft carriers. Uh -huh. And I was supposed to come one time to Champaign. I don't remember where we would have flown to on a TBM, but it was winter and I, was, I had to leave to come home. And it snowed in Ohio. So I didn't get to, I had to come by on train. Mm -hmm. But usually they went the southern route, especially in winter. Mm -hmm. And one night this uh, 
Marine, she was kind of snooty. She slept above me in the bunk, and the next day their plane crashed and she was killed. Oh my goodness! So was that a TBM as, that crashed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, any they could uh, constantly people were coming and flying out to the coast or what. I guess they must have been going to California. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to, when we did guard duty, we had to uh, escort the people to the hangars because uh, everything was confidential, you know, in the airport. Mm -hmm. They didn't want people, you know, going into the hangars. And, mm -hmm. How many waves were at Mercer? Do you, do you have a feeling for how many women were there at that time? Probably about a hundred. Mm -hmm. No, the, not that many. Because that book I have, mm -hmm. there's not that many waves in it. Mm -hmm. were, were those people about, that were in your boot camp at, at Hunter? Or had they also been trained in other places? I didn't know places? any of them. Oh, you didn't know any of no. them? Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of intermixing of people? No. Mm -hmm. And I... Uh, Went home one time to East, to Syracuse with a wave, and I said, "Let's go over to uh, Cross Hines and just visit, because that's where the factory was." And uh, they wouldn't let me in. They said, "It's a defense plant." You, and, but I said, "I used to work here," and they said, "Oh," and they ended up giving me a twenty-five dollar bond and a prescription, subscription to a magazine for several years. And I mm -hmm. never knew that because mm -hmm. when I left, I didn't know why, you know, I realized I was going to be joining the service. Mm -hmm. So that was a pleasant surprise. And I got to go up to uh, Boston one time with uh, one of the gals. In Long Island, I went to a wedding out in Long Island. So I got to, I packed a lot in those little over a year. What, um, what was the date then when you left the service? March the 8th. But, uh, of 1946. 46. And what happened to you after you left the service? And I it was uh, mustered out in uh, Great Lakes. I went to beauty school on the GI Bill, mm -hmm. and then I flunked hair dyeing, which I've been accused of dyeing my hair for years. <laughs> anyway, I, and then I got married and had four children. Now, how did you meet your husband? Well, we were uh, at this nightclub. My girlfriend's sister, we were celebrating the gal's birthday and uh, her car, her sister's car wouldn't start. And so Lloyd and his friends were sitting near, near us. So they took me home. So that's how I met him. Now your husband, you and your husband were both in the Navy. Did any of your children join no. the military? I tried to get him to join. <laughs> How do you think this experience has influenced your life? Well, I think it's it influenced, influenced my life quite a bit. I really enjoyed what I did and the experience. And I was recently talking to a girl I talked into going in into the Navy, and she said that was the best thing that ever happened to her. She re, she's been active in the American Legion. I joined the, I was, I'm a lifetime member of the VFW in Urbana. Mm -hmm. but I don't go very often. But Are there people that you have kept in touch with through the years? Yeah, for several years I did. But I know the one gal that I played basketball, she was from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I visited her, and she came and visited us. So, but 
there's no, and I think she must have died. I haven't heard from her for a couple of years. Now, I, for, I neglected to ask you a little bit more about the basketball experience when you were in the military. Was that an important activity for people on the base, and did you play other at other bases or travel around? or We how did played uh, Camp Kilmer is where the Army went out of the, when they went overseas. Mm -hmm. We beat them, and then we found out why later, because their star player wasn't playing that night. Anyway, mm -hmm. that they hadn't been beaten for a long time, but we played mostly uh, just citizens. The men played. We went on the bus with the men players, mm -hmm. and they they would uh, we would play first, and then they would play. We played East in Pennsylvania, I remember, and several club groups in uh, around Trenton, because mm -hmm. they usually had a woman's team in the East like that. We didn't have those around here. We didn't have the basketball. But they called call me Red and my <laughs> girlfriend. They called us the gold twins. Was that an important activity for people at that time? Yeah. Well we I spent a lot of time shooting baskets over in the rec room. The rec hall was right across the street. They had the, the men's barracks were one side of the tennis court and the other side was us. And I tried tennis and they even went out real early in the morning and the men hung out the windows and laughed. <laughs> Made mm -hmm. So I liked to play. And we saw a lot of, mo I saw a lot of movies over there in the rec. Mm -hmm. They showed movies and they had church every Sunday. Is there anything else that you would like to mention during this interview? Th something, anything that we did not talk about but is important to you that you would like to say? Well, I have uh, four really great children. One lives in uh, Menifee, California, and one lives in Spring Hill, just south of Nashville, Tennessee, and a son lives in uh, Urbana and a daughter, Joyce and Champagne. And Steve lives in Urbana and Roger lives in California and Gladys lives in Tennessee. So we visit, we go to California in the winter and in the spring we go to Tennessee. When you are with your children, do they ever ask you about your experiences or have they ever asked you about your experiences during the war? Yeah, I think they have. Mm -hmm. And I worked almost 23 years at the school, Urbana School District. I typed when my husband went to business college after the war, after we got married. I typed letters for him and I got interested in typing, so I bought a typewriter and typed for students for 10 years. Oh my goodness. I was number one on the line I. So I did a lot of typing on this old manual. Oh my goodness. And then I went to work at the Urbana School District in 61. Uh, and I worked for the director of personnel and special ed at first. And then I was director of personnel secretary mm -hmm. for about 20 years. In the last three years, my boss was the director of personnel anyway, and he was made superintendent, so I was his administrative assistant it sounds for like three a key years position. at Wiley School. Mm -hmm. So that was really enjoyable. So I know a lot of teachers. <laughs> I bet there are a lot of people who owe their um, degrees to you for all the typing that you did. I, I typed. 30 thesis. Oh my goodness. I have the record of all the thesis. Mm -hmm. I, that was the hardest. In those days, nowadays, it wouldn't be a problem at all. Mr. Lane, is there anything you might like to uh, make sure we add to this interview? Well, 
actually, I knew, I didn't know it, but I thought her when she was 14 or 15. So I, I uh, roller skating over here in Urbana. I roller skated. So oh, your I husband. Was, she was roller skating by herself in the center, and I thought she was stuck up. <laughs> I belonged to a club that <laughs> I probably say we that. did everything. Right. And I skated in New York, Syracuse, New York City, Trenton, Chicago. So it sounds like you were very athletic. Yeah, I love sports. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very, very much for mm -hmm. your time today. And we're certainly very honored that you came and did this interview. Thank you very much.